So lastly, let us go to the test preparation part two, and that is now the strategies, okay? So testmanship involves test preparation, that is in the previous module, and testmanship involves the specific strategies. So this is your task at hand, the multiple choice question. A lot of people think a multiple choice question is easy because they have this saying, nandyan naman yung tamang sagot. The correct answer is always there, which is actually correct. But if you have four or five other choices to choose from, it changes the whole story. Multiple choice questions needs a technique. So what you have to know is who is your enemy and how do you logistically prepare for your enemy? In this case, your enemy is the exam. So all of us know you're preparing for an MCQ. So let us dissect the science behind the MCQ so that we can optimize test situations. Now, these are the components of a multiple choice question. Number one is the STEM. Number two is the options. Number three is the distractors. Most students spend so much time with the distractors. And as the name implies, they are intentionally placed, okay? They are intentionally placed there to distract the exam taker. Remember, there are no shortcuts. You will not be licensed. You will not be a subspecialist. You will not be a specialist. It will not be given to you on a silver platter. Passing this exam is your rite of passage, okay? Take note of the components of a multiple choice question. STEM, the options, the distractors, then the key. Now, I would like to remind you that there is always a theme in a multiple choice question. Since the exam is part basic and it's part clinical, you have to know clinical vignettes, okay? For example, a 35-year-old man, hypertensive, diabetic, figured in a vehicular accident. He had a fracture, a pelvic fracture, as well as a fracture of the femur. He was rushed to the emergency room. Blood pressure was 90 over 60. Heart rate was 88. Respiratory rate was 30. O2 saturation was at 76%. Within a few minutes, the patient complained of difficulty of breathing, then all of a sudden went into cardiac arrest. What do you think is the primary impression right now? You have a long bone fracture. There's sudden unexplained dyspnea. There is tachypnea. What do you think is the impression? So let's see what's on your mind. What are your answers? Type in the chat box. What do you think is this case? Long bone fracture, biglang nagtakipnya, all of a sudden there is dyspnea and went into cardiac arrest. What form of embolism do we usually encounter in fractures of the long bone? Okay, so this is a classic example of a clinical vignet of most likely a fat embolism. Okay, so please Take note of that. Now, there are lead-in statements. In the lead-in statements, they're going to ask you, what is the treatment of choice? What is your most likely impression? What is the most common symptom, the most common complication? So those are just examples of lead-in statements. Now, this is basically a theoretical multiple choice question. This is the stem, this is the correct answer, and everything else will be distractors. Now, always remember, when an examiner makes a question, they will consider the following. 
They will make some of the options and the distractors negative. They will include qualifiers and absolutes like the word always, never. They're going to put words there like increase, decrease, hypo or hyper, least, most, worse. And they're going to include several correct, correct options. Okay, so please take note that this is the theoretical anatomy of how an examiner would create a multiple choice question. Now, let's go over this multiple choice question. So this is the question or the STEM. Rick Astley's never gonna A, give you up, B, let you down, C, run around and D, desert you. Of course, the correct answer. I know you're singing this song in your head. Okay. Yung iba nagsasayaw pa. Okay. All of the above. So this is an example of the STEM. This is an example of the options. And this is an example of distractors. And of course, the correct answer. Okay. This is just a theoretical, uh, let's just say, template. Okay. But Rest assured, I promise you, Rick Astley will not come up in your exam. Now, multiple choice questions has a STEM, which usually in specialty exams is a clinical case presentation. That is why you have to go back to your clinical exposure as a trainee. Cases you saw in the ER, cases you saw in the operating room, cases you saw in the outpatient, cases you encountered during conferences, so there's the STEM, there's the lead-in question, there's the series of choices, and typically, there's one correct answer, typically, and four distractors. Now, example. So this is a STEM, 32-year-old, four-day history, progressive weakness of the extremities, okay, had upper respiratory tract infection 10 days ago, had a febrile episode, is tachypnic with RR of 42 per minute, he has shallow respiration, he has symmetric weakness of both sides of the face, weakness also of the proximal and distal muscles, sensation is intact. So this is an example of a stem. So this is an example of a stem. Now, this is an example of the lead in. Using the same case or stem earlier, this is the lead in question. Which of the following is most likely the diagnosis? Then we have the options, which is usually four to five choices. So is it A, B, C, D, or E? Okay, next. Now that we know the anatomy and structure of a multiple choice exam, these are the tips you should bring with you to the actual exam. So number one, eliminate answers you know are incorrect or are not right. Put an X in the choice so you will not choose it. Read all the choices before you choose the answer. Do not be too excited, do not be too confident, and do not be too complacent. Even if you know you studied, there's no room for, let's just say, lousy mistakes, okay? There is no penalty for guessing. That is why select an answer with logical guessing. And this is only used when you don't know the answer. Now, very important, dito ng kamali yung estudyante. Don't keep changing your answer. Usually, the first choice is the correct one. However, however, I need to put a qualifier. Only choose only change, rather, your answer if you are sure that you misread the question. Okay, next. The all of the above or none of the above rule. Okay, always remember this. If you are certain, okay, let's highlight this. If you are certain one of the statements is true, sigurado ka, one of the choices in true is true, then... Always remind yourself, do not choose none of the above. Why? Alam mo na, na one of the choices is true. Even if you don't know the other choices, by testmanship, 
you know the correct answer cannot be none of the above. Next, once you read one of the choices is false, even if you don't know or you're not sure of the other choices, but sigurado ka with at least one false choice, automatically do not choose all of the above as the answer. Now, tip. If you know that there are at least, okay, take note, there are at least, okay, two correct choices and you're not sure about the others and there is an option not all of the above, automatically by virtue of testmanship, you choose all of the above because there's already two sure ball true statements, okay? Now, so always remember this. In a question with all of the above choice, if you see that there are at least two correct statements, then all of the above is probably the correct answer, okay? And always remember this tip. Not always correct, huh? but when in doubt, usually the correct answer is the choice with the most information. Again, this is applicable when you are not sure of the answer. Okay? Yung pinakamataas na choice, yung pinakaparang scientifically correct, okay? It is most likely lifted verbatim from the textbook. And it is most likely with correct information. Now, issues related to test wiseness. So this is an exercise in your seats at home or wherever you are, try going through this exercise. So this is the case. A 60 year old man is brought to the emergency department by the police. The police found this man lying unconscious on the sidewalk. After ascertaining that the airway is open, the first step in management should be the intravenous administration of A, examination of cerebrospinal fluid, B, glucose with vitamin B or thiamine, C, a CT scan of the head, D, phenytoin, E, diazepam. Now, this is just an exercise where I just want to see whether you can eliminate. Now, is there something here that you can eliminate? Is there something here? What choices can you eliminate right away? So again, identify the stem. So that's the stem. Now identify the lead in question. The first step in management is the intravenous administration. So automatically, okay, automatically, you can already eliminate examination of CSF, CT scan of the head, because there's no IV administration of the examination of CSF or an IV administration of a CT scan. So you are now left with B, D, and E. So that's just an example of the process, okay? So the lead-in statement is very important. So here, so if you are a test-wise student, if you are a test-wise student, you would eliminate choice A and choice C because they are grammatically incorrect and lo logically not following the STEM. So a test-wise student is left with the choices of intravenous administration of thiamine, intravenous administration of phenytoin, or intravenous administration of diazepam, okay? I'm gonna give you a little more tips, then we're done. So when you take a multiple choice exam question, or test rather, always remember what we call in testmanship as absolute terms. This would be always, and never. So absolute terms is a red flag during the exam. A lot of skilled examiners would always insert 
the terms always and never. So whenever you encounter this in the stem, in the lead-in, or in the choices, be extra careful. Okay. So for example, in patients with advanced dementia, Alzheimer's type, the memory defect is A, can be treated adequately with lecithin, B, could be a sequelae of early Parkinsonism, C, is seen in is never seen in patients with neurofibrillary tangles, D, is never severe, E, possibly involves the cholinergic system. Now, just a simple exercise, where are the absolute terms? So here's the never, never seen in patients, and here's another never, it's never severe. Okay, these are just exercises just for you to identify them, hopefully in the future in actual questions. Now, next, uh, the principle of what we call the long correct answer. Correct answer is longer, more specific, or more complete than other options, usually, okay? But again, this is not absolute. Now, look for grammatical cues in the exam. So one or more of the distractors do not follow grammatically from the stem. Example earlier, we mentioned intravenous administration. So that means they're talking about an IV drug or a drug in the intravenous form. So for example, they're gonna give you a stem and the lead in question is, the standard or the definitive treatment of this case is. So therefore, you look at the choices, which is a treatment, whether it is medical or whether it is surgical or a combination of both. So the cues you have to remember or look for are grammatical cues, okay? Now, we'll skip this. Now, answering options. Improve your odds by thinking critically. What does that mean? If they give you one hours, two hours for the exam, use the time. Do not be in a hurry. Use the time to think. And you have to think critically. When you're in the actual exam or practicing at home, cover the options. Cover the options. Takpan mo yung mga choices. Read the stem first and you try to answer it without looking at the choices. Next, uncover the choices and select the option that most likely or most closely matches your answer. Now, the process of elimination or what I call POE, find the wrong answers, okay? Circle words such as, take note of this, so these are the words you circle, except, least, false, incorrect, or not true. Why should you encircle these words? Because you need to be aware that they are part of the question. This is where the test why student does better than the student who doesn't have testmanship. Now, cross out the negative, yung mga statements. There's a stem. At the end of the stem, sa dulo ng stem, there is what we call the word except. Okay? So cross out the negative and read the stem or the clinical vignet as though it were positive. Now, in the rules of good test construction, theoretically, the examiner should avoid except the examiner should avoid double negatives, okay? None of the above except those are not good questions. But again, it depends on who your examiner is and whether they underwent a seminar or a workshop certifying them as good examiners who know good test construction. Now, keep your original answers. I mentioned this earlier. I will mention this again before we end up. Okay, the debate between to change or not to change your answer. This is a difficult decision. Always remember, keep your original answers unless you have misread the question or the answer comes up later as you look over other questions. 
Read carefully descriptors, very important, such as words like, number one, chronic, acute, greater, greater than, less than, is this an adult? Is this a child? Is this a male? Is this a female? Is this a hypertensive? Okay. Take note of prefixes such as hyper, hypo. Okay. Is it hypertonic? Is it hypotonic? Is it hypertension? Is it hypotension? Is it thenar? Is it hypothenar? Is it non, un, pre, or post? These are descriptors which you have to read carefully. Now, when you take the exam or you do practice exams, I strongly encourage you to underline and make markings in the questionnaire. Hopefully, they will allow you to do that. Make underlines, make Xs, encircle keywords, and for the choices, okay, if you're down to 50-50, when you're only choosing between letter A and B or letter B and C, Go back to what you underline and choose the one that most likely jives with what you underlined. Okay. Now, winding down, I want you to remember to use your time wisely. Know the ground rules. Be aware of emotional cues and academic cues. Use good reasoning and adapt to different test types. But in this case, you're only adapting to a multiple choice question. Is this pure recall? Is this analysis? Okay. Is this a logical question? Is this reading comprehension? Or is this a clinical correlate? Now, as to using your time wisely, always remember, you have to know how long you have to complete the test. Oh, I have two hours. Oh, I have one hour and a half. Okay. Set up a schedule in your head. Answer easy questions first. Do not spend so much time on a hard question. Proceed lang, proceed. Daanan mo siya, you skip it, but make sure you put those reminders that you have to go back to it. Prioritize high yield items. Know the ground rules. So this is very important because part of testmanship is when you are there in the battlefield, you are now at the testing site. Know the time limit. Know your scoring. What is the passing? What is the cutoff? What are uh, the number of questions that have to be answered? And if there's something not clear, clarify it with your professors, clarify it with your schools, your mentors, your training officer, your chairman, your proctors. So winding down, the concept of guessing. Doc, I thought we're not supposed to guess. Yes, we're not supposed to guess. But in a multiple choice question, sometimes... There's what we call logical questions. There's always a question that the examiner inserts. You mga WTF questions. You mga questions that came from a different planet. You mga questions that where in the world did this question come out? These are questions na pambulabog lang. You mga questions to see who read the book or you mga nice to know. Remember, any standard licensure exam would have more must-knows rather than nice-to-knows. That's why focus on the must-knows. So for guessing, you can guess because there's no penalty for guessing. And always remember, don't guess if you are penalized for guessing. So this is not applicable in your exam. Use hints from questions you know to answer questions you do not know. Sometimes the hint is in the choices. Sometimes the hint is in other questions in your exam. Now, please take note. Logical guessing is only applied when you really don't know the answer. Okay? So final tip. This is what most patients, what most colleagues, and most doctors see. Success. They see this on the outside. We pray for your success in your licensure exams, your specialty exams. What most people don't see is the hard work, the perseverance, the sacrifices, the rejection, the discipline, the doubts, the failures, and the risk. Remember, build your foundation. There are no shortcuts. And one of the most important things for you 
to succeed examination wise is the test preparation and the test wiseness, which is testmanship. So with this, I want to end with one of the slides I began with. Always begin with the finish line in mind. Okay, please remember this. So with this, this is Dr. Toom saying thank you for listening. I pray for your success. Claim this success. Make your parents and families proud. Make your mentors, your consultants proud. Make your institution proud. We pray for your success. And always remember, with God, impossible becomes I am possible. So God bless. Daghag salamat. Maraming salamat. And Thank you.